the rest of the story. A solitary automobile is driving down a long, lonely stretch of highway through a dry, desolate swath of Southern California. Welcome to the parched Mojave Desert. The lone motorist realizes his engine is near overheating, so he stops the car. He turns off the ignition. The engine will cool off in a few minutes. That'll give the driver time to stretch his legs. The desert is bright and strangely silent. The traveler muses that he might listen very carefully and perhaps hear the echoed voices of Spanish explorers or maybe Indian war cries across the chasms of time. In the distance, a great dust devil, sort of a miniature clear air tornado, flicks through the Palo Verde. Invisible waves of heat rise from the desert floor, the stuff of which mirages are made, the motorist thinks. And then suddenly he sees it. It's quite far away at first, slowly emerging from the stark desert wildness, slowly coming toward him. A man, surely, for the figure appears to be walking upright, and yet its shape and its movement is not quite human. And it comes closer, and the closer it gets, the stranger it appears. Its head is proportionally large, almost perfectly round, like a big metal ball. Its body is bulky and seemingly encased in a peculiar, thick material. And at last, this monster of the Mojave is close enough for the traveler to be certain that it's no mirage. It is indeed real, and it has come from nowhere on this earth. The motorist jumps into his car and turns the ignition key, but the engine won't start. And the thing, this spaceman, is drawing closer. The motorist scrambles from behind the wheel and starts running anywhere just to get away, running out into the desert, and the spaceman apparition starts running after him. The motorist looks back over his shoulder. He's terrified to see the creature in pursuit, and the creature is gaining. Within 50 yards now, within 25 yards, suddenly the pursued man stumbles, falls to the desert dust. He thinks this is how his life will end, in the middle of some wilderness nowhere, at the hands of a man from Mars. But this is the rest of the story. The motorist was nobody you know, just a traveler in the American Southwest. Yet once upon a time, almost half a century ago, there was an American aviator who dreamed of flying higher than any man had ever flown before, far beyond the Earth's troposphere, up into the stratosphere, nine miles high into the sky. And for this adventure, the aviator would design for himself a pressurized space suit to be made of heavy, rubberized cloth and metal, the very first functional space suit, really, and the pilot's wife would stitch it together on her sewing machine. Well, the pilot succeeded. He did indeed reach the nine-mile-high mark by an airplane in 1934. And he is among our nation's most famous aviators, Wiley Post. You remember it was he who died with Will Rogers in an Alaskan crash some years later. Aviation history also records that in 1934, during a daring high-altitude attempt... An engine failure forced Post into an emergency landing in a dry lake bed in the Mojave Desert. And that he, still wearing this one-of-a-kind hand-sewn space suit, sought the aid of a passing motorist for a lift to the nearest town. The motorist was never able to get anybody to believe his story. Until now that we all know the rest of the story.